finally, before you program a Half-Life mod, you need to do a few things. First of all, you're going to choose an SDK. Then you're going to create a mod folder and you have to have all the tools necessary. Let's start with the SDK first. Typically, an SDK contains a bunch of tools and asset sources and maybe source code to build game DLLs. What we're interested in are the code SDKs. If you search, you'll find the following code bases. The first one is going to be HLSDK 2.3. Then HLSDK and Valve's GitHub, also known as 2.4. Then there is Solo Killer's updated HLSDK. Then there's also Solo Killer's Opposing Force SDK. Let's go through them one by one. The 2.3 SDK is pretty old. You shouldn't use it nowadays, unless you really want to support one Half Life. Now, SDK 2.4 is the latest official one by Valve, and you can compile it on Visual Studio 2010. But the Linux make files need updating. You can use this one if you can't use the latest Visual Studio. It's good, it's official, although it still has a couple of bugs which are interestingly fixed in the Steam version, such as raw mouse input. Makes me wonder why Valve doesn't just provide the same code in the SDKs in their games. Oh well. Solo Killer's updated HLSDK for Visual Studio 2017 and 2019 is my personal recommendation for everyone. Linux make files there are updated. The code is updated to compile on the latest tools as well as to silence some warnings. And some of the C code, which is the player movement code, is converted from C to C++. I'll use this one in the tutorials. I've also mentioned his Opposing Force SDK, which is also good if you want to make something that's based on Opposing Force. It has all the weapons, it has almost all of the NPCs, and ropes are there, and a couple of other things. As I mentioned earlier, raw mouse input is broken in all of these. So while working on this, make sure to disable raw mouse input in the game options. You can find Solo Killer's updated SDK on GitHub and download it as a zip file. There are other ways to download this, such as cloning it via Git, but I'm gonna cover that in the future. For now, just extract the zip file into any folder. Preferably, it should be a path without any spaces in it. In order to actually test your mod, you will need to create a mod folder. It's not a good idea to overwrite vanilla game files, because if you try, go ahead and replace vanilla Half-Life's DLLs with your own, you won't be able to play on multiplayer servers anymore, because your DLL differs from the others. Chances are you already know how to make a mod, but just in case, I'm gonna cover it anyway. So what you'll do is go to your Half-Life installation folder in Steam, Steam Apps Common, and create a new folder. Then go to the Valve directory and copy a file called liblist.gam. It's a simple text file that contains some basic information about your mod, so it can show up in your Steam library. And for starters, edit the title. You can put anything in there, for example, my mod or crazy glitch life or whatever. You can restart Steam and your mod should show up. Now, let's prepare the tools. I'll be using Visual Studio 2019. You'll need to create a Microsoft account because it will ask you to activate Visual Studio about a month later. No worries though, it's all free. During the installation, you only need the C++ desktop development kit, nothing else. Once all that is done, navigate to where you extracted the SDK, then go to Projects, then Visual Studio 2019 or 2010, 2017, depending on the SDK which you use, and then open a file called projects.sln. Here you have several projects. You have Ricochet DLLs, you have Deathmatch Classic DLLs, and Half-Life DLLs. We're only interested in the Half-Life ones, so you can delete the others. Here's a quick description of these two projects. HL underscore C DLL, is the client DLL. It contains all the HUD code, the view bobbing code, some weapon prediction stuff, a little bit of rendering code, and other client side stuff basically. Also, it does feature the input code and whatever. HLDLL is the game or the server DLL. It contains the monsters, triggers, player code, weapons, and basically everything regarding entities, including Funk Breakable and others. We'll focus on this one in the beginning. Control click both projects, then right click and hit build. This will take a few minutes, depending on your PC. 
Once it's done, you'll go back to the VS2019 folder and you'll see that a new folder has appeared. Inside, you're going to find two folders, HLCDLL and HLDLL. Inside each of them, you'll find the actual DLLs. Now, client DLL goes into the CLDLLs folder in your mod, while HL.DLL goes into the DLLs folder. For the end, let's actually make a change. Let's make all funk walls emit light and print hello world when they spawn. You'll go to source files, DLLs, and then bmodels.cpp. Find the cfunk wall class and find its spawn method, then add the two following lines. That is, the pev effects bright light thing and then alert at console hello world. I won't explain what they do right now, but it's important for you to understand that you are now making an actual change in the code, which you will see in game. Now build the game DLL, exit the mod, and put the newly built DLL into your mod. You can launch a test map that you might have built, and you'll see what you've achieved. In the next part, we'll make a completely new entity from scratch. Until then, happy programming!